how do songs go viral? Now, in reality, the answer is that nobody really knows. There's no magic formula to it. However, there are still some indicators as to how songs may be put on the top hits. Songs reaching the top hits are not those that sound the most similar, but those that sound uniquely different. There are three key elements of a hit song. I will lead you to some clues through the songs I'll play. Have you heard of this song before? Now you've most likely heard of this song before. If you haven't, it's called Havana by Camila Cabello, which hit the number one top hit out of the 100 top hits of 2018. Now, if you notice this song, it only uses three chords, which are C minor, A flat major seven, and G seven. Now, it's such amazing how songs with the least amount of chords, in this case, only three, are those that go the most popular. Now, if you've ever heard of Havana before, I'm sure you're able to find a pattern in this song. The most popular verse indeed, it's Havana Unana. And Havana Unana, the meaning to it? Well, no one actually knows, but the musical connection to the beat is amazingly catchy. Now, our brains like recognizing patterns, and the beat of a song is a great pattern. When we recognize a pattern, we are able to sing with it. And when a pattern repeats again, our brain is having like a little party. <laughs> I know this pattern. I've heard the first part, and I know what's going to happen next. Well, I'm crazy smart. So as soon as you hear the chorus, your brain immediately recognizes the pattern even though you've never heard of the song before. Now, what does recognizing patterns and beats have to do with elements of a hit song? Now, let me introduce you the first element of a hit song. The first element of a hit song is memorableness. Now, memorableness indeed has a large connection with patterns and beats, because when we recognize patterns, our brain immediately inputs it in our central memory. Now, memorableness is indeed a really important factor and element of all hit songs, because with it, people will be able to remember the song and sing it wherever they are. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say I'm walking to school, I'm in the streets, and I sing this tune. Na 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 na, na 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 na. And then someone approaches me and asks me, what song are you singing? Then I answer, of course. It's Havana by Camila Cabello. There you go. That's another person knowing the song because it was so memorable and it was stuck in my head. That is why memorableness is a very important element in a hit song. Now, yes, memorableness is indeed really important, but there is another second essential element which makes hit songs. Have you heard of this song before? So you've also most likely heard of the song before. If you haven't, well, you're missing out because it's Despacito by Louis Fonsi, the world's number one most viewed music video with a stunning 5.9 billion views. Now, what makes Despacito so special? What makes it have the ability to become the number one most viewed music video in the entire universe? Well, the beauty of this song is that while there are 437 million Spanish speakers who can actually sing along 
to the whole song in fluent Spanish. The other six billion people in this planet, which includes me, share one same experience. And that is that they are only able to sing one word in the entire song. <laughs> and what is that word? You got it. It is indeed despacito, which most of us can only sing. Now, despacito is definitely repeated significantly in the whole song, and it's definitely memorable. But there is another element which makes Despacito a hit song. Now, as I said earlier, the world has an estimated of, of 437 million Spanish speakers, which is roughly 0.006 of our total population. Now, even for the people who do speak fluent Spanish, there's an unexpected combination of ballad and regation in Despacito, which leaves our minds unexpected. For the youth of today's generation, we will feel unexpected to hear a ballad song in the 21st century's hit pop songs, whereas the elderly people will also feel unexpected to finally hear a ballad song in the 21st century after not hearing it for such a long time, since the 1700s or something. <laughs> now, yes, so I revealed you the second element already, which is unexpectedness. So the first element is memorableness, and the second element is unexpectedness. Now wait up, there is this last element that is really important in all hit songs. Without this last element, no matter how much memorableness or unexpectedness a song has, it will never become a hit song. And before I reveal you this last element, let me bring you a couple 10, 20, 30, 40, or even 50 years ago to show you an example of a hit song in the past. So, does this seem familiar? It's Hey Jude by the Beatles, which released in 1968. For those of you who don't know the song, it was essentially a hit song in the late 1960s. Now let's get straight to the point here. What do you think makes Hey Jude a hit song? Let me give you five seconds to think. Okay, your time is up. <laughs> so if you had guessed in your mind that Hey Jude is a hit song, because there was the na 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 part at the end, then you are most likely correct. Good job. Give a round of applause for yourselves. Now this na 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 part at the end lasted for an entire four minutes out of the entire eight minutes of the song, which is already more than half of the entire song. Just na 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 without any beat changes or lyrical changes. Just na na na. And it's definitely memorable, as I said before. Memorableness and unexpectedness cannot stand alone. And in Hey Jude, there is memorableness and unexpectedness because the Beatles decided to put the na 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 at the end instead of the front. Now, why is this so smart? Because if they had put it at the front, people were only able to sing it a maximum of four minutes. But because they had put it at the end, people could sing it endlessly. They could not only sing it for four minutes, but they could sing it for 10 minutes, 10 hours, or even 10 days, just na na na, because it was endless. That is the point. Now, definitely, memorableness and unexpectedness play a big role, but they cannot stand alone. They are worthless. Worthless without spreadability. Now, spreadability, I revealed it already, is the third element which makes a hit song a hit. Music needs us. It needs us to spread it and share it with other people because music is meant to be enjoyed not only by one person, but by everyone. Now, let's say my favorite song is Hey Jude and I share it to 20 people. So 20 people will view it. And let's say each of the 20 people share it to another 20 people per person, which means it's 20, 20, 20, 20. That means already 400 people would view it. Now, let's say each of the 400 people share it to another 20 people. So it'll be 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 400. 
that will make it. Already 8,000 people viewing the song. So the point on this is that music grows the fastest with the power of spreadability, with the help of us sharing it to other people. And I'm very fortunate that I can simply share it to all of you with a single tap on my smartphone. It's really convenient and quick. Yes. So, after showing you hit songs from the past, Hey Jude, and hit songs from the present, Havana and Despacito, what do you see as a difference? Now, years ago, hit songs would only be considered hit songs when the song has sold a lot of CD copies and people would be playing it at their CD players, hearing at the radio, or singing at parties at school, at work, or wherever they are. They were songs that people actually enjoyed listening to, songs that actually had a message. But in the contrary side, if you look at today, nowadays, hit music aren't necessarily musically great in nature. They can simply be hit songs because they're either really horrible and people want to spread it to social media to get our attention, or they're either just so well endorsed and spread out by people in power, essentially the famous people with an existing reputation. Now this makes it incredibly hard for us to figure out where the popularity of the 21st century's hit songs are coming from. We have no idea whether it's from the eye-catching YouTube video it has, or from the music itself, or from the high reputation the artist already has, or how social media is spreading it. Now talking about social media, I myself enjoy using social media to spread music with my friends and family. I think it's a good thing, as music is meant to be enjoyed by everyone. In the past, sadly, there was no social media. So if I wanted to share a song to you, it had to be face-to-face -face or through a phone call or through a text message. It wasn't that easy. So as a final play to you, let me play you this last piece. Thank you, thank you. Now you've most likely not heard this song before because it's called Moonlight, a song I composed this year of January. Now do you think that Moonlight has a possibility on becoming a hit song? Yeah. Does it have the three key elements of a hit song? Memorableness, unexpectedness, and spreadability. Does Moonlight have memorableness? No, not really. Does it have unexpectedness? No. But does it have spreadability? Yes, all songs have spreadability, but this gives Moonlight a failing score of one out of three. And my answer is that Moonlight has a possibility, but it'll be very, very hard. So as a final word to all of you, the ways music has spread over the years have changed due to social media and technology. But the three key elements of memorableness, unexpectedness, and spreadability will never be lost in a hit song. Thank you. <laughs>